Hey everybody, this is Evan for Method at GetMethod.com and this MethodCast Quickie is going to be a series and we're going to be talking about emitters in FormZ and Maxwell. And emitters are great for creating lighting effects and interior lighting um, when you're not going to be solely relying on an external sun source type of a light, which could be a physical sky, it could be a sky dome, it could be a, an HDR image that you're using to light your scene. So in architecture, you know, a lot of our scenes are, are interior. Um, if we're doing a remodel or you want to show the interior of a room, whatever, you know, you might have a combination of interior and exterior lighting. And so let's jump into Form Z and take a look at this uh, situation. So here we are in Form Z, and I've got just this simple box that I push the side out of because we're going to be just kind of looking in. And uh, no windows in this room, with the exception of the wall behind me that's missing. And I, I just set it up like this to kind of show you that, you know, a lot of times when we build our models, we, we don't even build every piece of the room. You might just build the piece you're going to be looking at. So um, I just have this simple plane in the background that's just got a wood texture on it. And uh, you can see I pulled that away from the edges of the walls because one thing I'm going to be showing you how to do here in the second part of this video is how to create cove lighting around that edge so kind of an indirect glow that'll be happening the first thing I want to concentrate on is uh, just setting up a soft box type of a light which will be an emitter type of a light here using form Z and Maxwell so by default you know we have a physical sky and so if I just turn on Maxwell fire here we can see what this looks like I just have this kind of floating over a sky background, just the default physical sky setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck fire here real quick. And if you turn off um, every kind of emitter or Maxwell light object in the scene and you turn fire back on, you get an error that says it can't, can't render it because there's no light sources in the scene, which includes emitters. All right. So by default, Maxwell requires that you have one of those in the scene. So the other way to do it is to create, if you're doing interiors only with no windows, I'm going to hit the plus sign here in our lights palette, double click on light, and I'm going to set that up as a softbox. Now these last five light types are all Maxwell types. And uh, we've covered some of the other ones before. By default, you could just have a physical sky in the scene. Sky domes render a little bit faster. Whenever you're working with interior lighting, you can use Form Z's point and cone lights, and you can use IES lights, which use a, um, a set of parameters for that mimic exactly what the light with its lens and everything would project onto a wall. For instance, like a like a like a recess can light, for instance. Um, I'm going to be using the softbox type, and the softbox is the fastest Maxwell light that you can render because it's very simple parameters. It just is a plane that shoots light out in a single direction, and it's really easy to control. Um, we can go into the parameters tab, and you can see here that you can set up the height and width for that light. And so it's just kind of set up as a typical 2x4 um, T-bar ceiling grid type of a light. You can also uncheck invisible geometry if you want to see the actual lens of the light, which you might want to do. Um, Otherwise, that by default is checked. And then the intensity down here, you can change those power settings. So by default, you're at 100. Um, you're probably going to have to go quite a bit higher than that to see it, depending on the camera setting. So right now, my camera is just set up as a default daylighting kind of a scenario. So if you change your camera lens out so that you, know, you have a, a bigger aperture, which is a smaller number, and maybe a more sensitive film plane, you know, ISO 100, if we look at that real quick up in our Maxwell settings here, if I go to camera, um, our shutter speed and our sensitivity and our f-stop are all set up for daylight. So you probably would want to go down to like, I don't know, 2.4. This could probably be about, I don't know, 400. And then the sensitivity maybe around 800 for the film sensitivity. And then that would probably be a little bit more sensitive in a low lighting scenario. Um, so that might be something you want to do. So by by doing that, I'll turn that light on, and you can see there it is. And now it's just kind of pointing at the center of our scene, and it's a two foot by four foot light. 
And so that is an emitter type. And if we go back into that real quick here, um, you can also change the color temperature of that. So if you wanted it to be a warmer light, you know, you might want to be around 3000 or something like that. You can change those settings. Now you're going to use your traditional move tools to get that where you want it. So you might want to go to like a quad view here, click in these different scenes and using your move tool, then you can place that light where you want it inside your room and you can change where the, um, the center of interest and the point of view for that light are and you can get those exactly where you want them. Okay, So that takes a little bit of time to set that up and get it where you want it. What I've done here, I'm going to turn that one off and I have one set up here and I'll turn it on and you can see here it is inside the space and I changed the size a little bit. This is a 1x4 fluorescent light um, just by using the default settings and the other thing about it is I really raised up the intensity up to about 10,000 wrong one here let me click on the one that I made and you can also see that in the parameters I changed it to a six inch by four foot and I turned invisible geometry off just so we can see it alright so let me turn on Maxwell fire now so you notice that's the only light on in the whole scene so we're not going to get any light bleed from the exterior and Maxwell also won't give us any problems because there is a light in the scene okay so you can see that combination of two things I've got the emitter light and you can see that looks really nice coming in there but also with the camera settings set up for a darker scene you can achieve a pretty well lit scene with a single six inch by four foot plane and then what you can do is let me turn that off and if we really wanted to start looking at this in a more of a realistic scenario I can select that light I can move copy I can say even increment give me four of these copies and then I'm just going to pull four of them across the scene there so once you have your light set up it's easy to make copies and then we can turn fire back on and see what that's going to look like and you can see now I have a very bright scene and now I would probably want to go in and uh, let me undo that real quick go back to my single light source go into there and turn this back down let's go down to 250 so I basically cut the output of those by three quarters and then I'm gonna move and copy those four lights again across the scene and open up Maxwell fire here so we can see the nice evenly distributed light inside the space alright so that's it for this method cast quickie I hope that you got something out of it in the next one we're gonna be looking at how to set up a material as an emitter and then look at how we can make any kind of geometry we want um, and this is the kind that you're going to want to use for neon lights um, I like to use it for just about everything though um, make it look like we've got um, incandescent light bulbs cove lighting um, you're really a lot more free because you can use any geometry that you'd like alright so I'll see you guys on the next method cast quickie bye